yes, team needs were filled in the offseason in free agency and the draft. Could inside linebacker have been filled this whole time and we just don't know? Let's find out. So here we go to the long list of team needs for the upcoming 2020 season. This order is up for debate in the comments, but I think this would be a probably a consensus long list of what we as Packer fans believe to be the needs going into the offseason. Some are were probably a little bit higher on other people's lists, like maybe some people would have wanted tight end a little bit higher. In my opinion, that was a little bit of an overrated need as there was Jay Sternberger, who is set to be the starting tight end after Jimmy Graham was cut and now signed with the Chicago Bears. Some would say running back is not that big of a need because we have Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams as running backs, but both of them are set to be free agents. Their contracts, they are heading into a contract year. So I think that probably elevates the running back position a little bit higher. So it doesn't become a need, a much bigger, greater need for next season. That would be the same reason for some of these other needs like offensive tackle. So it doesn't become a greater need later. And same thing that goes for cornerback. And uh, nose tackle, Kenny Clark is coming up on a contract year. So he will either need ext an extension or we or possibly nose tackle should be elevated to a higher need. But since I think that the Packers are going to extend Kenny, that's why I have it no at number 13 instead of it being a little bit higher. Going back to the start of the 2020 offseason, the Packers on day one came out firing and got busy and signed some players to fill needs big needs one of them inside linebacker christian kirksey was signed for two years and christian kirksey is has been brought here to replace blake martinez who we let go and wound up signing with the giants wide receiver we got devin funches for a year who is to set to replace geronimo allison who was very much a disappointment and he wound up going to detroit Right tackle, we got two years with uh, Ricky Wagner, who was spent some time with uh, several different teams, the Baltimore Ravens and the Detroit Lions. We got him up for two years to replace Brian Balaga as a little bit of a stopgap measure until we can find the true heir apparent to the great Brian Balaga. Thank you, Brian, for all that you've done in Green Bay, man. I miss you still. Defensive end, one year with... We got a couple of one-year deals with uh, Trevon Hester and Gerald Willis. I think I'm assuming that these are one-year deals. There have not been any details of the two signings, but I'm going to assume that they are one-year deals with a very much probably more of like a veteran minimum type of contract for both of those guys. They will be depth guys probably. Who knows? Maybe uh, Hester or Willis could step up. Right below that is the list of positions that were not addressed in free agency, but that's not to worry about because they will be addressed. They, 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 we, we will come find out that they will be addressed in the NFL draft. And now we got to this point here. After free agency, it's the NFL draft. Every late April, teams fill even more needs and make upgrades in areas, or they go for the best players available depending on the situation. That's what the Green Bay Packers pretty much did. Not only did we fill some needs or address some needs and filled needs, we took some of the best players available. And that is certainly no, certainly no stranger to what the Packers have done in the past uh, seasons, give or take, depending on the year. Inside linebacker got another another player in there, Kamal Martin, picked in the fifth round. He certainly helps the uh, inside linebacking core, and now we are we are we have some depth there. I will say that for sure. Back of quarterback Jordan Love picked in the first round, 26 overall, got him on a trade up. I believe that need was filled right there with uh, the selection of Jordan Love. Whether you 
like, love, or absolutely hate this uh, hate this draft pick, Jordan fills a need, even though it's kind of like on the lesser part of the uh, list that was created. Backup safety, Vernon Scott drafted in the seventh round, so he's going to help uh, add some depth in the uh, uh, the safety, uh, the backfield, and the, the defensive backfield at the safety position, whether he plays free or strong. Running back, this was addressed by the drafting of A.J. Dillon in the second round, and I believe that this need was absolutely 100% filled because we will probably have one of the two running backs coming off contract years, and one of them will be signed to more of a long-term deal. Hopefully it's Aaron Jones, because Aaron Jones is going is probably the man to take this, uh, this running game along with AJ to new heights in Green Bay. You will have the uh, lightning and thunder, if you will, playing in uh, in Wisconsin. Uh, tight end was addressed, for sure. And I would have to say that this is uh, not just tight end that was filled. I think you could say that fullback was filled as well because uh, Josiah can play both, for sure. Uh, we've seen him play pretty well at tight end during his time in college and he has been used in the fullback role as well, and he probably will likely be in the fullback role to start out his time in Green Bay, but I think we will see him as an inline tight end as well. This guy is a versatile guy, and that's why he was chosen in the third round, as opposed to waiting for a day three selection to potentially miss out on him because another team could have uh, targeted him and selected him before the Packers were to have thought about of taking him. I can say that the tight end position is definitely filled and there are quite a bit of tight ends on the roster already enough as it is. And then backup guard and center were filled with three guys. We got a backup guard, you got John Runyon Jr. and Simon Stepaniak, who were all both taken in the sixth round and backup center was addressed with Jake Hansen in the sixth round. So. The interior of the offensive line is very well stacked now. In fact, you can say it's probably too stacked as a couple of guys may have to be uh, given the uh, the goodbye and possibly either traded or released. I'm thinking Lane Taylor. I don't think it's Lucas Patrick because he was given just given an extension. So I think Lane Taylor or Cole Madison could be given the boot because we brought in three young backup interior offensive lineman. Backup outside linebacker was addressed in the seventh round, Jonathan Garvin, no problem with this one. The outside linebacker position was a lesser need, so it made a lot of sense to get a, a project outside linebacker in the seventh round. Jonathan Garvin certainly fits the bill, and he, could, and he is very much a welcome addition to the outside linebacking core in Green Bay. Recapping the 2020 team needs, it's pretty safe to say that the Packers did a pretty good job of addressing and filling needs on my long list of the team needs. Although they were kind of on the back half of the the list right there, you know, you have backup developmental quarterback being on the highest, and then you have, you know, uh, filling in depth in areas and selecting for a more of a more of a future need at the running back position in which Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams both come up on contract years. One of them will not be back. AJ will fill in for one of them. The inside linebacker one has two question marks because it's hard to tell if the position was actually filled and we just don't really realize it yet because of the uncertainty of what the Packers are going to do on defense, what Mike Patton has in mind for the position, will they go for two starting inside linebackers or just one? Because we do have a player that can play an inside linebacker type of role, and that is strong safety Raven Green. We have seen him play in the, in the box, safety linebacker type of role. He excelled there before getting injured. So I have to believe that that's probably the, the reason why the Packers didn't address inside linebacker in the draft, but only in free agency. So 
I think that one is kind of up in the air. It's something that could be a part of uh, the discussion in the comments or in a future video. Uh, the wide receiver position, this one is probably not up for debate. Uh, the need was addressed by the signing of Devin Funchess. However, did we do enough at the, way we're at the position to give Aaron enough help to work with? That one, I think the, the, the a need was addressed, but I'm not entirely sure if it was filled. And I think a lot of us would, uh, probably a lot of us would say that the, it was not filled and it is going to be a problem for this upcoming season with Aaron Rodgers not getting enough uh, weapons to throw the football to. You got backup, backup offensive tackle that was uh, really not addressed, but that one's kind of a question mark because we don't know who is going to be able to step up in that role. There, It could be uh, John Runyon. That could be that backup developmental offensive tackle. We'll have to see what how things go for John if he is going to get any reps there at that position. Right now, we know that he is probably going to be a guard. I think he has the skill set and for the uh, for the guard role at the professional level. The rest of them, I would say the Packers did a pretty good job. We definitely uh, addressed most of the needs, but we didn't really fill them, which is why a lot of us kind of came back with a sour taste in our mouths from the draft class and how underwhelming it was also the free agent period was also pretty uh was also kind of underwhelming because we only came away with a couple of guys we only came away with Devin, we came away with christian and we came away with ricky wagner uh, from the looks of it on paper it looks like we got worse on the roster but we don't know yet uh, things could turn out where some guys are going to some of the guys that we drafted in past drafts are going to step up and they're going to play well there are certainly opportunities for players like Orrin Burks and, and Josh Jackson to come up and surprise everyone a lot of people were down and out on Kyler Fackrell which is why I would say don't give up on these guys just yet because Kyler Fackrell looked like a bust. And then look what happened. He turned into Kyler Sackrell. So that is the big picture of what the front office has done so far in the 2020 offseason to make the Packers a contender. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new to the, ch new to the channel. Packer fan or not, you are always welcome to come on here. And if you're somebody that wants to learn more about the Packers, this is a very good channel for you. So I'll catch you guys later. Go Pack Go.